disappointing or otherwise, GT7's first content update of the year has landed, and as such we've got our first small bunch of cars. Assuming that those monthly updates continue, plenty more vehicles are going to make their way to GT7 this year, so I thought let's have a go at predicting them. We've got 25 cars total, and of course, when it comes to these kind of prediction lists, we do have a big head start thanks to the leaked data mining list, detailing about 60 cars that are coming to GT7, or are in the data for it at least. But realistically, all of those are not going to make their way to the game this year, considering the rate that they've been drip fed to us so far. So my predictions are going to be pulling from that, a couple of cars that are outright confirmed as coming to GT7, and then a few more brand new ones based on pure vibes basically. So let's get into it, starting with those cars that I think are most likely to come from the data. Kicking us off then with car number one, the 2016 Audi R8 V10 Plus. One that I'm surprised isn't in the game already, considering A, we have its sister car, the Lamborghini Huracan, and the racing variants of the Audi R8 itself. I also think this one will be pretty well received, because it's not quite a duplicate, and Audi is fairly underrepresented at the moment. So, with that in mind, I have a second pick from Audi, the 1986 S1 Quattro. Now, not the 87 Pikes Peak version that we currently have in the game. Yes, they are very similar, but I do just kind of see this being something that Polyphony would do. Both of those variants made their debut into Gran Turismo in GT6, so they're both fairly recent and would need less upgrading than a standard car, you know, PS2 asset. We'll see what happens. Moving on then, we have a BMW next, and probably not the one you'd think from the data mark, the 2002 Turbo from 1973. Now, I'm sure most people would want, and probably expect, me included, the E60 M5 a bit more, but, you know, I think this might be more likely. A nice classic to kind of round out an update that maybe has some more modern cars or race cars in it. My next pick is from a new brand, or I should say a returning brand to Gran Turismo. They departed in Gran Turismo 6, but I think Caterham are going to come back with the R500 Superlight that was in the data mine. This isn't the Caterham we had before, that was the old 7th Fireblade, but I think this would go well with what GT7 seems to be doing at the moment. There's a lot of events using the Radical, and it will be good to have another car in that kind of category. Let's go with that, the KTM Crossbow, and the BAC Mono. My next pick is the only American car from this section of the list, from Chevrolet, the Chevelle SS454. Again, another car previously in Gran Turismo in GT6 and before. It was a standard model, so it would be nice to have a Chevelle in the premium 4K glory. And I also get the feeling that the possibility for engine swaps would be highly entertaining. The next car, however, has not been in Gran Turismo before. Although we know the car has been scanned way back in the GT Sport days, it's still yet to materialise. The Lancia 037 Rally Car. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the full data mining list, two versions of the Delta Rally Car the 1992 Integrale and the Delta S4 were in this list as well, but I've gone for the 037. It's there, it's ready to go, they're going to have to use it at some point right if they've gone to all that trouble. Sticking on an Italian theme, we go to Ferrari and the 2019 812 Superfast. Its predecessor, the F12, made its debut when GT7 launched, so it would be nice to have its successor as well. And GT7 have been doing better than usual by their own standards for adding more recent cars with these updates. Think the 992 GT3 RS, the Maserati MC20, or the Aston Martin Valkyrie even. Next up, I have a couple of picks from Mazda and specifically MX-5s. The first of which is the 2007 NC generation MX-5 Roadster, Miata, whatever you want to call it. Again, it was a premium model in the older Gran Turismo games, and 
it was quite a prominent car and even back then had some decent upgrades. So I think it's about time we got some more generations of MX-5 because we've only got the NA, the first generation, and the latest ND at the moment. Although now I'm going to theoretically add to that list of ND variants with my next pick, the 2018 MX-5 RF, which for those of you who don't know is basically an MX-5 mechanically identical but with a kind of Targa style roof. Not a very inspiring choice, but again, it's the kind of thing you can see Gran Turismo doing. Then again, there would be ways to differentiate it with different engine swaps and visual modifications. The next car on this list, I actually put in my personal wish list of the Christmas update that we never actually got. And that was the Mitsubishi Evo 8. It's my favorite generation of Evo, but that general shape of the Evo 7 through 9 is not in Gran Turismo at all currently. It needs some representation. Both the Evo 8 and the Evo 9 are actually in the data mine, so it could be anyone's guess which one turns up, but here's hoping for at least one. And since I've just spoken about a Mitsubishi Evo, let's balance things out, as all things should be, with my next pick, the 2010 Subaru WRX STI. We did get the 2004 STI a little while ago, and of course we have the second most recent generation, the 2014. So this one would slot nicely in the middle of those. But there is another special reason why I've chosen this car and think it's quite likely to arrive. Because when you go and get a wide body in GT Auto, the little animation and symbol that comes up is of this generation. 2010 WRX, which seems a bit weird considering it isn't in the game. So I think at some point it will be in the game. But now we move on to the least logical and probably weirdest pick of this entire list. However, maybe not. It is in the data mine, and much like the Lancia Row 37 that we talked about before, it has been confirmed that this car has been scanned already, and quite a long time ago. The Renault Avanti. Yes, the weird French coupe come people carrier come sales failure is a strange choice, but then again, who would have predicted the Toyota Alphard or the Toyota Ambulance? It's entirely possible. However, if we're going to go for a more sensible pick from the same manufacturer, how about the R5 Turbo Rally? Of course, we have the standard road going version, so why not the rally car? We need more real rally cars in the game, and of course I've chosen a couple already for this list. So here's hoping, personally, that this one joins those. Now for one final car from this section, I've gone for the 2005 Mark V generation Volkswagen Golf GTI. Again maybe a bit of personal bias at play here because I just really like it, but hey it's not entirely out of the realms of possibility is it? And the next two cars that I'm going to talk about definitely aren't, because these are the ones that have directly been confirmed as coming to Gran Turismo 7. And one of them is coming this year, and that's the Afila prototype that we found out a month or so ago. An electric sedan that was made as a collaboration, well, the whole brand, Afila, between Sony and Honda. The car has been directly confirmed as coming to the game specifically in 2024, so we'll see which update brings this one. And for the second card that has been confirmed as coming to GT7, it's also an electric one, the Turn 14 racing variant of the Tesla Model 3. With the Spec 2 update, we did get its road version. Again, this is a theme we've seen a couple times in this list. But in a trailer showing the car before GT7 actually launched, it did say that that specific vehicle would be showing up in an update. But that now brings us on to the final section of this video. My personal picks, some again were in previous Gran Turismo games, some are totally new to the franchise, so please let me know if you happen to agree with these points. The first of these however has been in Gran Turismo before, the Autozam AZ1, the little Mazda K car, and to be honest, even though I think it is kind of likely, I'm mainly just kind of manifesting this into existence because I want it. 
But of course, it's not without precedent, if you will, because we do have the 90s Honda Beat and the Suzuki Cappuccino, which came in the very first GT7 content update. Moving in alphabetical order then, my next pick also was last seen in Gran Turismo 6, and in fact it debuted in that game as well, the 1957 BMW 507. If I'm not mistaken, this was one of the special 15th anniversary cars as well, so I think they put quite a lot of effort into it, and it would be a shame if it didn't come back. Maybe it wouldn't be the most useful, but it is very pretty, and Polyphony could go and stick it into the legendary dealership for like three times the price that it cost in GT6, because that's what they do. Anyway, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. Looking at my list now, the third car was also previously in Gran Turismo. I promise we do get onto some all new stuff, but that third pick is the Chevrolet El Camino SS. It was last in GT6 and had some brilliant customization. It was also quite a fun drift car. So I think in the world of GT7, it would be even more of a fun pick and you may even get some use out of it. Okay, so now onto the new stuff and it is all new cars from here. The first of which I've gone for is the Ferrari 296 GTB. Not the GT3 as maybe some people would be hoping for, but the road going hybrid 830 horsepower supercar. As absurd as that amount of power is, and you would be able to get more with upgrades, it would be continuing the lineage of the so-called baby Ferrari. We have the 430, the 458, and the F8 Tributo. I know the 488 GTB is kind of in there as well, but missed. And like I said earlier, Polyphony are doing a bit better with adding more current cars, so here's hoping this one will happen. I don't foresee many people complaining if this one turns out to be true. I do think we're overdue some race cars on this list however, so why not have two? And one of them I actually found out about its existence through researching the other. But that first pick was the Nissan Z GT500 Super GT car. We have a few different eras of Super GT car now, so I think it's about time we get some more up to date machinery and seems like a fairly likely candidate since the Nissan Z road car that is in the game was one of the freshest cars when GT7 launched. But yes, I have picked another car from the Super GT GT500 category that I didn't know was racing, but is pretty cool. The Honda Civic Type R GT500. Of course, the race car is rear wheel drive and it's a Civic in name only, but it's still pretty cool that a Civic is in that category of racing. Of course, the NSX has been retired now and taken off sale for the production version as well. So I guess Civic is the way forward now. And speaking of the way forward, SUVs are getting a lot more popular, but their representation in Gran Turismo is basically non-existent if you exclude the Jimny that came in the last update. But for this pick, we're going to the other end of the scale, because I've selected the Lamborghini Urus. I think if Polyphony do decide to put a car like this in the game, it's going to be the Urus, if not a Cayenne Turbo. And should it come true, I do see it being probably quite a popular choice, especially for customization and online stuff. I just mentioned the brand there briefly, so we may as well talk about them. Porsche. They have been pretty prominently featured in GC7, now that they can, now they're out of the shackles of the EA exclusive license, so I've gone for another pretty current pick, in the 911 Dakar. Despite Gran Turismo's questionable rallying physics, they do seem to like rally cars and rally events, and this would lend itself perfectly to that, while also appeasing quite a few people. I really like the 911 Dakar, so I'd be happy with it too. Okay, moving on, we have only two cars left now. So my penultimate prediction is the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. The most recent one, of course not the most recent generation Mustang, but the most recent GT500 with 760 horsepower. We do have the GT350R, but this is basically that car with a supercharger whacked on and just turned up to 11. Also, 
you could get some crazy power out of it with upgrades. So, why not? Go on, Polyphony. Do it. Not to mention the Camaro ZL1 is also in the game, so could have a nice little rivalry there also. Now, I know you're normally supposed to save the best till last, but this one might annoy a lot of people on the face of it. Because not only is it an electric car, it's also a concept car. Not a Vision Gran Turismo, but still, it's not on the road yet. However, it's probably the most Gran Turismo pick on this list. Hell, Polyphony actually helped with the interior. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about the Nissan Hyperforce concept. Presumably a preview into what the next generation Nissan GTR is going to look like. And there isn't really a car more ingrained in Gran Turismo history than the GTR. Also, while not official, there have been some renderings of this car with a background that looks suspiciously like Special Stage Route X. Honestly, I would be more surprised the most on this list if this one didn't happen. But that is the end of this list. So let me know your thoughts on my list and what you think I missed and what you pick yourself. But that is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.